Here's May. Good evening. This is May Brussel in Carmel, California. This is broadcast number 495, and it's May 31st, 1981. In all of the years that I've been broadcasting on KLRB and on other stations, it's nine years going into my tenth year, I've never had a news story so ripe with conspiracies and interlocking intrigue as a story that broke this week. It's Italy's Watergate, or it's a continuation of our assassination syndrome and our Watergate scandal, all wrapped up into a ball of wax that broke in the news just last week on a Reuters news story, Masonic Lodge Scandal Shakes Italian Regime. And most of this broadcast this evening is going into the background of that scandal as it broke just this week because of the interlocking links to the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan and the assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II. And then hopefully get through enough material on this scandal and other material in the next week or two to show the interconnections between those two events and the scandal breaking in Italy at this time. Since the first of the year, just before uh, 1981, John Lennon was shot in December of 1980, then there was the assassination plot in Spain, a coup to kill the king of Spain. Those uh, plans to kill the royal family were uh, revealed last week after the seizure of the bank by the fascist group in Spain. Uh, February 1980 was the first attempted coup, and the murder plots just came out this week. Uh, the Bolivian government has changed hands in the last week. They agreed military dictators would change seats so that that government has toppled this past week. The, um, there was a murder attempt in the United States on the president of the United States, a murder attempt on the Pope. Two months later, the president of Bangladesh was murdered yesterday, and the president of Ecuador was murdered just last Sunday night when I was coming to KLRB. I heard about it. So a lot of heads of states are falling. There are a lot of people behind these assassination attempts. Whether the murders are successful or merely attempts, there are a warning of what to expect in the future. And I'm going into the Italian scandal in just a few moments. Preceding uh, the shooting of Ronald Reagan, and the shooting of Pope John Paul II, I had been talking for many, many weeks in the past year on the missing money, the fascist money, that is going into Argentine, South America, and literally the Odessa, the worldwide fascist organizations, uh, not just ordinary bank uh, robberies for personal reasons, but fascists who have claimed credit for the robberies in order to finance their fascist activities. I've talked about uh, $60 million involved with a Jack Bender going down to Uruguay and with Mengele's down there and fascist money from Toronto, Canada to Swiss insurance companies to Los Angeles, Monaco, and uh, a fellow out of uh, Philippines who removed $18 million, and then another $100 million, Billy D. And I did a program on West Germany's bank heist, uh, money being taken out of San Francisco, robberies. $45 million in the past year or so. The Wells Fargo, 2 to $300 million missing. The uh, Michael Sendona scandal of the Vatican money and interlocking links to organized crime, the $45 million out of the Franklin National Bank alone. Uh, I'm going to zero in on Michael Sendona because he is integrally related to this plot that is unfolding in Italy at the present time and because he was the financier for the Vatican and worked with Pope Paul VI, who was the godfather, literally, of uh, Pope, uh, John Paul II. Uh, the missing money of Sendona and its interconnecting links to organized crime and the mob and the Vatican now unfolds with its links to Argentina and to a secret organization inside of Italy that has allegiance to a fascist group that worked with Mussolini as against the real allegiance to the Vatican or the Pope. I've been saying that that was the role of Sindona a long time, and now this evidence is coming out. Uh, Sindona was uh, under investigation for $11 million that went to this country, to the Christian Democratic Party in Italy that he was funding, and members of that party are caught in the scandal. And also the great Nugent Hand Bank, the CIA bank from Australia, was funding the Christian Democratic Party also, so that the uh, organized crime, the CIA, the heroin traffic was coming into the political party in Italy that is now being uh, 
changing hands and being removed because of this terrible scandal that's taking place. Before I go into that for one moment, I want to uh, call attention to an article in the Wall Street Journal this past week, May 21st. It's called An Inside Job. Like Wells Fargo case, the Chase Manhattan Bank in New York is missing $20 million. I did a list of millions of dollars, adding up to about $22 billion that this particular team have access to, which is a large amount of money for espionage or coup d'etats or silencing police forces. And the latest missing money, in quotes, is from Chase Manhattan. It has tentacles to people working inside the organization in New York, who longtime workers, 26 years at the bank, and another one, 14 years. And now they're saying, oh, we have our problems, too. We happen to be missing $20 million. What they do is pluck $20 million out and give it to particular agents and that aren't on the book of the intelligence community like the CIA or the FBI or the National Security Agency. They chalk it up to a bank loss, and then that money goes to fund espionage operations wherever they want them to go. Now, in as much as time allows, when I get through discussing the Masonic Lodge scandal in Italy, I will continue on with the Nugent Hand Bank story and its links to the Italian teams, the Nugent Hand stories and the links to the Vatican, the Christian Democratic Party as the recipients of funds from both places, the missing millions of the Italian government scandal. I talked about that on KLRB March 15, 1981, called Fraudissimo, about the missing money, and that is the money that is causing the Italian government to change hands, but not only the government, but high officials in the government. And then I want to go into the dual job of Paul C. Marcinkus. He's the bishop in charge of the Pope. He's the chief bodyguard for the Pope wherever he travels out of Rome. And he also happens to be the highest ranking American in the Vatican and the president of the Vatican Bank. So that Marcinkus is... Uh, in charge of all the Vatican funds, and he's an American citizen, actually, from Cicero, Illinois, which is the home of the Al Capone gang and the Sicilian mob that moved into the United States, so that Cicero, Illinois, claims fame to the headquarters of the and heart of the Italian mobs, and their uh, fellow from Cicero, Illinois, is in charge of the funds at the Vatican Bank, and you can see that gets a little complicated. And then I will go into detail uh, further into a book, The Final Conclave of the Investments of Sindone into Gulf and Western, and they're owning the Watergate Hotel and uh, Mad large controlled Madison Square Garden and the links of Harold Smith, the man that was uh, involved with the uh, at least $21 million out of the Wells Fargo Bank, and he alleges there's $300 million that's been going on for 8 to 10 years in espionage, the role of Gulf and Western to Wells Fargo, to Madison Square Garden, to Ronald Reagan, and Frank Sinatra. And then we get back into the White House to Ronald Reagan. All of these items are a accumulation of stories that are interlocking that I will lead to. And then Mahama Aje, who took a pot shot at the Pope. I'll go into the chronology of where he was from January 1979 until November 79. What was going on in the world when he left a message in November 79 that he would kill the Pope and then a year and a few months later, he's in St. Peter's Square. And then the links, of course, Aja of Aja, two West Germany banks, the Nazi, fascist uh, heroin traffickers, and again, the scandal in the Italian government now. All of this is interlocking and explains why there were shots at Pope John Paul at this time. The link of heroin traffic and a fascism that did not end with World War II, but which is very ripe, and a peak of it came out just this past week. We got a good view of it just in a few news stories that I'm going to share with you in case you missed it or didn't see it. Some of the papers had a Washington Post back on page 28 instead of a headline story, which it should have been. But just before I get to that in detail, I do want to mention again a very quiet story that didn't make the headlines everywhere. Uh, the New York Daily News or the New York Post, one of the two, had a large story this week that Joseph Mengele's, the notorious angel of death from Auschwitz, has been very much alive in New Jersey and Westchester, New York. 
He has a relative living in New Jersey who has a farm manufacturing company called Krona Mangalese uh, Numier, and he also worked for that. Uh, the firm is well-known in Germany. When he left Auschwitz, he never was wanted as a war criminal. He was never wanted at Nuremberg trials, and when he was recognized in Germany, he went on down to South America. And I've alleged for a long time that Mengele's has been in and out of this country, that the FBI uh, has documents. He is, in fact, American citizen since the 1930s, and I've had information from people that he's been in Nevada City not too long ago, and now it turns out that he was very much seen in Westchester County, a headquarters of narcotics, organized crime, and his crew from Uruguay and Paraguay and Chile and Argentina have a lot of activity up in Westchester County and in New Jersey where he was, and Megalese does travel in the United States, has lived here, goes in and out of the United States. That was confirmed by another series of articles that just came out this week, but those of you who are familiar with this program know that I've been saying this has been happening for a long time. There are a lot of people that are outraged by the experiments he did at Auschwitz, his, his extermination policies, uh, his treacherous experimentations on people, all kinds of body experiments. But there are many other people that consider him a fine, reputable citizen, and they look upon those victims at Auschwitz as animals or beasts, and they don't think of him as torturing. And uh, I believe that if we look farther, we'll find the boys from Brazil. The movie was made about Mengele's will, in fact, be the boys from Guyana. I've said that also at the time of the Jonestown massacres. Joe Holsinger, the aide to Leo Ryan, who was murdered down at Jonestown, had given me the phone number of a doctor in Westchester County who allegedly supplied the bulk of the drugs for Jonestown. And I did, never called him, and I kept the number, but that's an interesting point now because of Mengele's association with their, their in Westchester and the ex experimentation of electrodes and the surgery without anesthetics and the mistreatment and the narcotic or mind experimental drugs that were down in Jonestown. As I said before, the book The Children of Jonestown tells about enough drugs for a population of 60,000 in the laboratory, and there were just at the most uh, 900 to 1,000 people there, but there were different accounts, as you know, when they first were counted, the bodies over 400, and then it, the number was greater the next day. So I was told that the drugs, the bulk of them, came for their experimentation or treatment from Westchester. So it would be interesting now to see if Mengele's and this pharmacist who sent them to Jim Jones uh, had any connection and if the boys from Guyana are the boys from Brazil. And I've had a deep feeling for a long time that there were connecting links between the Jonestown experimentations and Joseph Mengele's from Auschwitz. Well, I'm going into the articles as they broke this week because there weren't that many, but they were very important and they were pertinent to what I've been saying over the past nine years on these programs. The San Francisco Chronicle had a small article titled Masonic Lodge Scandal Shakes the Italian Regime. This was a Reuters news service, the first story. It was not an American wire service. And the article says the Italian cabinet appears certain to be reshuffled. The government could fall. Several prominent politicians belong to a secret Masonic lodge. The first story said that several prominent, it later turns out to be hundreds of the most important people in the Italian uh, government or well-known citizens, if they're not government officials, in Italy are part of a particular Masonic Lodge. There are 550 Masonic Lodges in Italy, but one of them is the core of the secret team, the government behind the government, that has allegiance to Argentina and to a Nazi fascist regime outside of their government of Italy. There is a list obtained of 963 people who are members of this secret team, and this is the kind of thing that Fletcher Prouty wrote in his book, The Secret Team. This is the one in Italy. The first account said there were two cabinet ministers, 30 members of the parliament, the leader of a government party, the chief of the defense staff, which would be like our Casper Weinberger here, having allegiance to uh, Mussolini's team or Hitler's team instead of uh, the President of the United States, which is, in fact, what I think they have. 
and also the heads of the Secret Service were named in Italy, and I'll go into the comparisons to the Secret Service in the United States. They have an order called the P2, that's an abbreviation for their lodge, the P2 Lodge, a specific Masonic organization which, it quotes, in reality, seems to have been the center of a hidden and corrupt power. This was the first account from Reuters. The Lodge Brothers, a member of this lodge, included Michael Sendona, the fellow I've been talking about week after week on KLRB, who's now supposed to be serving 25 years of jail in the United States for the collapse of his banking empires. He's an attorney who had two banks in Italy and uh, took over the Franklin National Bank in New York City, where 45 million all of a sudden was missing, and he's serving 25 years in jail. He was the financier with Pope Paul VI to, in to make the investments of the Vatican that he put into American corporations like Pan America, IBM, Gulf and Western, Madison Square Garden. He took Vatican money and put it into American corporations, then combined it with the Gambino family of organized crime. So you had American corporations, organized crime, and the Vatican. And now it turns out that he's a member of the secret lodge that swears allegiance to South America and Argentine and that group. And in fact, wasn't really representing the church of the Vatican, the religious organization, but was siphoning their money away for a secret society. Two financiers in Italy, Robert Calvi and Paolo Bonomi, I'll go into them later, were arrested for fraud. The fraud that I mentioned weeks ago on this program in March, uh, as I say, it was called Fraudissimo in Time magazine, has to do with $2 billion that they took out of the country that was supposed to be oil and energy tax money that belonged to the Italian people, $2 billion, and sent it to Argentine and to the allegiance down there to that organization in Argentine instead of belonging in Italy. And I don't want to digress too far, but I'll give a comparable article weeks from now on American oil money equaling $2 billion that has been siphoned out of this country, also that belongs to the people. The first article said that all the members of this secret illegal Mason society had sworn their loyalty to Elicio Gelli, G-E-L-L-I, who worked with uh, the SS troop, the Secret Service troop of Mussolini. He was the liaison of the SS to Mussolini, and they swore their loyalty to Gelli, the lodge's grand master. And Gelli has two citizenships, two, one to Argentine and one to Italy at the same time. Gelli fled the country at the time of the oil scandal breaking, the $2 billion dollars that the government lost in Italy, and he's down, allegedly down in Argentina at the present time. Flaminio Piccoli, the secretary of the Christian Democratic Party, uh, said that the membership of the Christian Democratic Party and the adherence, adherence to the Freemasons can not be other than incompatible. Uh, the Christian Democratic Party was claiming that there was no way that they could be Freemasons and be the Christian Democratic Party, and yet Michael Sindona, a member of this Masonic Lodge, was funding the Christian Democratic Party, and members of that were part of the secret uh, team. So the first story that came out had to do with several of the people in the government, several politicians. The next article came from the New York Times, a writer, Henry Tanner, May 24th. That was a week ago today. It was titled, The Italian Elite are embroiled in a scandal. The Masonic scandal is wrapping up the Italian elite. And this is what the New York Times had to say. The growing scandal surrounding the Masonic Lodge has shaken the coalition government of Prime Minister Forlani and has dwarfed all other scandals that Italy has endured in the last 30 years. Now, to say that it has dwarfed every other scandal is to put a parallel because it is directly related to those people and investments of, uh, that were caught at the time of Watergate in the United States that were never apprehended or sent to jail or were sent to jail for the tap on the wrist. This is the biggest scandal in Italy in 30 years, and it is the delayed reaction to things that were not solved at the time of Watergate that are coming out now. The scandal, according to the New York Times, has been simmering for months. That is a good quotation because, as I say, the past months on this program, I have been reading 
all of the fraud money of millions of dollars from various countries being sent down to these fascist organizations to be used for guns and narcotics and the overthrow of particular governments and assassinations around the world. And that is why on March 29th on KLRB, I announced that either the United States would go to war against Poland, which uh, General Haig was working up to a uh, frathy, or we'd have a coup d'etat in this country because these scandals could not hold any more. The, the uh, stories were breaking, and somebody had to put a stop to the banking money that was leaving. And I gave the example of $55 million out of the city of Berlin, the $2 billion out of Italy, and hundreds of millions out of the United States banks. It can't go on indefinitely. And as heads of states are killed, and you look into those murders, or the bank robberies go, or the missing money, it always taps back to the same sources. And that's why I knew March 29th that something had to come down quickly because these stories were breaking all over the world, similar to a bucket of corn popping and becoming visible all of a sudden as a large, large scandal. And 12 hours after the program on KLRB, there was the assassination attempt of Ronald Reagan, who's directly linked to the Michael Sedona, Nugenhain, Wales Fargo scandals, that assassination attempt on Reagan. And as long as they had the coup where George Bush of the CIA and Alexander Haig could take over and push Reagan in the background, then the troops in Poland could go home. There's no confrontation of Poland, and Poland isn't even in the news. Uh, after they shot Reagan and had what they wanted, Poland is forgotten and pushed in the back burner. Back to the New York Times article. They explained that P2, the initial for this secret lodge, particular lodge, is called Propaganda Dewey, D-U-E, Propaganda. And it's involved, they said, in the scandal involved our members of Parliament. See, it gets bigger than several. It involves judges in Italy, in the Army and police generals, bankers and well-known journalists. So it begins to grow. You have the parliament, the legal establishment, the military, the local police, the bankers, and the journalists. And when I say there is a coup d'etat in this country to overthrow the government, whether it's John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, or Martin Luther King, it involves members of Congress, it involves justices of the Supreme Court and judges, it involves members of our army, members of the police department, particular bankers, and newspaper syndicates that keep a lid on it. All of those elements in our conspiracies and assassinations are linked also to the secret society that is less secret this week because uh, the stories are breaking. Now, it could be that a lot of this is coming out because Mohammed Aja from Turkey, who is linked to this and the assassination attempt on the Pope, is sitting in jail in Rome, and he might be talking, and he might be giving out connecting links. And that's why this story broke this week, because he's laughing and joking. And they have a scandal, which maybe they were going to tap some risk for the $2 billion going to Argentine. But with the shooting of the Pope uh, and his sitting in the jail, it just may be that this is why the story of the scandal had to come out of the parliament, the judges, the army, the police, the bankers, and the journalists. Now, Mr. Lucio Gelli, G-E-L-L-I, as I say, is the Grand Master for the spying, and he holds dual citizenship. And another member of his gang, Mr. Sarti, a member of the Christian Democratic Party, who said they said it was inconsistent to belong to both, is also uh, part of the Lodge, the secret society of the Lodge. Now, the New York Times had uh, another section in this article on the members of the government who were involved and has a list of their names and uh, the Grand Master's affiliation, as I say, to Argentine and the fascist organizations. The goals of the Grand Master, according to the New York Times, was to bring under his control a large number of powerful and highly placed persons and break to break down for the first time in Italian history the separation between political, administrative, military, and economic spheres. Now, this is what happened when Hitler took over in Germany in 1933, and this is what happened after John Kennedy was killed in November of 1963, the continuous killing of, particu of 
particular leaders like John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, L.A. Stevenson, Estes Keefe Alver, or even I think that Drew Pearson was murdered, or Walter Winchell, journalists or people that do not play the game that runs into the hundreds. The goal isn't any different than stated in the New York Times this week. The Grand Master wants to bring under the control a large number of powerful people, highly placed to break down First time in Italian history, the separation of the political, administrative, military, and economic spheres. And this is what happened in Dallas in 1963, was to break down in the United States the separation of the elements of our government and put them under the control of one large hierarchy, which they've been trying to do from Dallas up to the Reagan administration. Jelly, according to the New York Times, constructed a state within a state, a very real state within a state. And that's exactly what Alan Dulles did in planning the assassination of John Kennedy. I wrote about that in my first published article, Why Was Martha Mitchell Kidnapped? The establishment of the state within a state and in Italy now, a piece of that is being exposed. Now, the method that they used, according to the New York Times, was blackmail. They promised favors, advancement, and bribes, but blackmail, and I've talked many times on the uh, women, the uh, organized crime links to public officials, the sexual pictures that people like Edward Bennett Williams, the attorney for the John Hinckley boy uh, or man, holds in his pockets the, the blackmailing of all political pic figures and military officials, generals, admirals, that the Howard Hughes organization had the sexual exploits, the use of the mob for blackmail and entrapping various people. The same technique was used in Germany, and it was used by Bobby Baker and Lyndon Johnson. It was used by J. Edgar Hoover and William Sullivan of the FBI. The techniques aren't any different. The important thing is that all the techniques that I've been talking about for the past years are surfacing now at this time because, as I say, there are very few countries or people that can survive if we allow these things to keep going and the Italian courts are arresting people and putting them in jail and making these charges. The banks in Italy have been charged with exporting large sums of money because of the dual citizenship and they are also charging uh, Mr. Jelly with the fake kidnapping of Michael Sindona. When Sindona was arrested in the United States for the bank fraud and the financial shenanigans, he took a little trip to Luxembourg in Italy to see his buddies and a few judges were killed, dropped dead on the spot and uh, Sindona took a trip to Italy to get either his payoff or his message, and then he came back to the United States and he had passports to travel. And this group is uh, responsible for the, in quotes, kidnapping. They simply put him on a plane and our Secret Service and Interpol and the American officials allowed him to go to Italy to clean up the loose ends. And this group were involved with Sindona leaving the country and coming back. Uh, this uh, Robert Calif, the president of the Banco Ambrosiano and La Centrale Finanzaria, I may not pronounce those properly, these important banks in Italy, financial organizations are involved in this scandal. Six members of the board of the El Centrale, a large bank in Italy, were arrested this week. They've been arrested, and the head of a large investment financial company, one of the four largest in Italy, has been arrested for his dual allegiance to the Odessa down in Argentina and not to Italy, to world fascism as against uh, taking care of their own country at home. I'll do more on the Italian scandal in one moment. We'll take a one-minute break, and then we'll be back with some more on the story that is breaking now in Italy. This concludes the first half of World Watchers International with May Brussel. We will return with the second half after a brief pause. Okay, this is May Brussel talking about the scandal going on in Italy. The government behind a government, the secret team, because this has been taking place in the United States for the past 17, 18 years, more open since the murder of John Kennedy. 
and that secret team uh, was caught sending two billion dollars out of Italy uh, to Argentine for purposes of a fascist organization with allegiance to something larger than uh, the Italian government. We hear uh, talk about the Soviet Union and world communism, but there's very little talk about world fascism, even though very many countries have been overthrown in the past 30 years for the express purpose of the resurgence of the Nazi regime. Uh, as soon as Pinochet was in power in Chile, the swastikas came out, and I can go on and on the various countries that are linked and funded by this activity. Going back to the New York Times article on the Italian elite embroiled in the Masonic scandal, the uh, author of that article, Henry Tanner, said, the financial establishment has been decapitated by the arrest of the various banking officials. In Milan, the story came out, they have literally been decapitated. Uh, they're in limbo, the financial establishment. And also the same man, the banker that's involved with these shenanigans, this Roberto Calvi, recently bought 40% of a particular publishing house, the Rizzoli Publishing House, and he owns Corriere della Sera, the leading newspaper in Italy. Uh, you can make the same comparisons to the major news media in this country, CBS, NBC, ABC Broadcasting, uh, their talk shows, the news that comes over these stations, and the major newspapers, the AP, the UPI, in the United States. They have an allegiance that goes much farther than to the United States. It is to a world order, and the world order is fascism. They do not tell the truth on these assassinations, whether it's and uh, the Manson family, the SLA, the multi-murders of the mind control zombies, the John Lennon uh, killing, the Jonestown killing, the newspaper media is controlled in this country, like it is in Italy, by payoffs, by people placed in top positions in order to allow that world fascism. A perfect example is Gerald Ford, who was a member of the House of Representatives and was appointed to the Warren Commission when John Kennedy was murdered. By He was appointed there by former Vice President Richard Nixon in the very first meeting. I've had this many times on the air. The subject came up. Earl Warren said, what should we do about handling the local press? Handling meant to keep from the American people the links of Lee Harvey Oswald to the world Nazi organization or the breaking up of uh, Don Taunt at the time that Eisenhower and Khrushchev wanted peace with John Kennedy. It was before Kennedy was in power when uh, Eisenhower wanted peace, breaking uh, the U-2 flight, having it come down so Khrushchev called off the peace conference. Um, Earl Warren hid the Nazi links to Lee Harvey Oswald after that great feat. But they said in their meetings, what should we do about the local press if they want a story? And uh, Gerald Ford said, well, gentlemen, I can handle the AP, the Associated Press, and the UPI, meaning I control the two major sources of news coming out of the country, and the small newspapers will have to take them on their own. So whatever goes to the major newspapers comes over the wire services, and it was that kind of protection, and it, it uh, now is more important for you to realize the role of Gerald Ford on, what, 15 or 16 major corporations and with Anna Chenault and the Flying Tigers and the Pebble Beach Corporation. He's a multinational millionaire with links to the same fascist organization and the Christian front organizations from the Dallas-Fort Worth area that work with John Hinckley Sr. and Jr. And his uh, fangs of fascism haven't changed one bit since he was appointed to the Warren Commission or Richard Nixon was working with Nikolai Malox of the Iron Guard, the Romanian Iron Guard that had headquarters down in Argentine. They used his office in Whittier, California as a cover dummy front for a Western Tube Corporation, a non-existent fascist organization. These people... The Gerald Fords and the Richard Nixons have allegiance to this same hidden government or fascist organization in uh, Argentine that the Italian government has. It's being exposed now. I wrote about that, as I say, in Wa about Watergate articles in 1972, and now it's coming out in Italy. But don't think that our heads of states represent the interest of the people in the United States or their welfare or are concerned about their savings or security or their livelihood or their housing or their health. The wealth and the profits and the banks that are spilling over, uh, the narcotics traffic profits going down to those funds down in South America 
to Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, Argentine are part and parcel of the same Italian secret society that got a little exposure this week and probably will be getting more in the weeks to come. As I say, these men are involved in newspapers and uh, have important newspapers in Italy. Among the army generals named in this scandal, uh, there's a name that appeared on the list as a Mason member of the Secret Lodge. His name is Raphael Giudice, G-I-U-D-I-C-E, former commander of the Finance Guard. He's the head of the paramilitary force specializing in border control and anti-smuggling operations. Now, the thing that funds these fascist organizations is smuggling operations, heroin, cocaine, you name it, all over the world, whether it's uh, in any form, the hashish, the marijuana, and so forth. So the head of the anti-smuggling operation, Border Control, is a member of the secret society with the dual allegiance. Now, if you wonder how Muhammad Ali Aja traveled from a prison in 1979 and left there in November and had $50,000 to spend before he ended up in uh, St. Peter's where he shot at the Pope. That His money comes from those operations, but if he traveled over borders from Iran and back into Turkey and to Bulgaria and Switzerland and Germany and England and down to Palermo and Sicily and Tunisia. He was in Naples and Rome and back to Rome and Mallorca. These people who are part of these assassination teams, whether it's uh, David Mark Chapman, who shot John Lennon, or the man who shot the Pope, or John Hinckley, who can travel all around the United States into New Haven, New York, Alabama, um, Georgia, Chicago, and St. Louis, Missouri, Texas, all over the globe, back to Hollywood. They zigzag all around. They have money. They In this country, they cross state lines with no trouble. But in Europe... Uh, they go all over the place, and if they leave the United States, they can travel all around the world like Chapman did in Bangkok, Hong Kong, Zurich, Switzerland, London, and back to Hawaii and Georgia, New York, and the guy that shot John Lennon. Uh, if the man in charge of border controls and anti-smuggling operations in these countries, if those people are involved with this dual allegiance, that tells you how Interpol can't find them because Interpol is part and parcel of the same fabric. Another man in jail at the present time in Italy in connection with this fraud, uh, sending money uh, overseas, was another high officer in the army, and he worked with this Jadusi uh, as part of the finance operation and the smuggling operation. So that these high officials are now some being put in jail, but they had important positions. Another person, a list of uh, traitors was, uh, they had a list of 20 officers, known officers of the organization called the Carabinieri. That's a prestigious paramilitary police corps. That's the equivalent of our SWAT teams in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, in Atlanta, Georgia the New York City Red Squad, the Chicago Squads. These are select groups. Our Attorney General this week said that the SWAT teams, the select teams, are on the lookout for terrorists or for people riding this summer in the streets because Ronald Reagan's going to cut off their occupations, their sources of income, their savings, and we'll have riots, so income, the prestigious a paramilitary police corps. They're training down at Camp Roberts with simulated war affair, and they'll be that's one place in California where they're carrying on their mini war. The troops are ready to handle us, but the prestigious paramilitary police group, similar to Squad 19, the Los Angeles Police Department group that worked with Richard Nixon and E. Howard Hunt and James McCourt, planning to kill Richard Nixon during the 1972 conventions and make Spiro Agnew the president. A peek at our Watergate is a peek at the Italian affairs now, and 20 officers of the paramilitary police elite corps as well as a man in charge of the borders, was picked up. Also, another man picked up was General Giovanni Grassini. He's chief of what SISDE, which is the Secret Intelligence and Security Minister. That would be like pulling in George Bush, which I think we should do, 
under house arrest for the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan or Alexander Haig. I think these people have a direct connection to what happened in Washington, D.C. in front of the Hilton Hotel. I think they are linked to the secret teams, Richard Helms, E. Howard Hunt, William Colby, George Bush, the CIA has been a government behind a government, and in Italy, they pulled in a biggie in the head of the secret intelligence and security mis- minister, General Giovanni Grassini. At the time of Watergate, when they were arrested in June, and we soon have an anniversary coming up in two weeks of the arrest at the Watergate Hotel, I wrote that Richard Nixon would be out of office because of Watergate, and John Mitchell and the entire gang around him were involved in that scandal of the government within a government. And John Mitchell, the attorney general, was removed from office, and Richard Helms was slapped with a perjury charge, was removed from the CIA, and a lot of top officials uh, changed places. Robert Mardian was kicked out of the judge, Justice Department, and Klein Deans, and so forth. We had a change of officials of this hidden government here. L. Patrick Gray from the National Security Council, who was the acting director of the FBI at the time. We had that group, Mardian and G. Gordon Liddy used to go down the R archives and watch Adolf Hitler's pictures, and they hired members of Hitler's Gestapo in Florida and elsewhere to work with Donald Segretti. This same ball of wax the United States that came out at the time of Watergate is coming out in Italy now. Uh, if there were more bank robberies and more money missing when Watergate fell, and um, people were hurting more, we would have had a better investigation then. But we let it slide, and now Italy has pulled in the chief of the SISDE, which is the Secret Intelligence and Security Minister, and then they pulled in another general, Giuseppe Santovito, the head of SIME, the security unity unit of the defense ministry, also a member of this Masonic group, this secret group. Uh, the Masonic Lodge that Mr. Jelly formed as a double agent from Italy and Argentine began in 1963 in Rome. Now, Pope John the 23rd died June 3rd, 1963. John Kennedy was killed November 22, 1963. That was the year when uh, Kennedy, Khrushchev, and Pope John Paul XXIII wanted peace again. That was the second round for peace after Eisenhower had won it with Khrushchev, and it was ruined by the downing of the U-2 over the Soviet Union and broke up the subject of Danton. A word never heard anymore, peace or Danton. We had one try when Eisenhower wanted it, and Alan Dulles, head of the CIA, and his brother John Foster Dulles made sure it didn't happen. The next chance came in 1963, but Pope John the 23rd, who was close to John Kennedy and Khrushchev, died, and a few months later, uh, John Kennedy was killed. Then the secret team was in full power in the United States. They took over here, and the end of the peace movement, uh, that was tucked away and forgotten. And in 1963 is when Jelly became very strong. And again, I've had on the program mention a book, Treason for My Daily Bread, with the links of the Nazis from Argentina and Chile, linked to Clay Shaw, who was in the OSS, with Alan Dulles, and then the CIA, directly linked to Rome. And I'll do a program soon and update you on uh, the Permandex organization and the meeting of the fascists for world fascism again after World War II was over. The Mussolini... Hitler gang in Italy that set up headquarters in Argentine and Chile, uh, particularly Argentine, to get ready for World War III. Uh, in 1963, this propaganda due the Lodge was formed just as the fangs of fascism came in this country. And as I say, the president was dead here and the peace-loving pope was dead in Italy. And out of the 550 Masonic Lodges, as I've said before, there are about 15,000 members uh, in the lodges in Italy. It's mainly a particular group that is involved in this scandal that is coming out. It's similar to uh, speaking to members of the FBI or agents of the FBI, and I've talked to them about Division 5 of the FBI and William Sullivan and the use of missionaries and Albert Osborne to run schools of assassination down in Mexico or South America. The average FBI man, agent never heard of such a thing. For all of the FBI agents around the country, 
that work to serve their government, that believe they're uh, finding some form of justice or solving bank robberies or kidnapping or murders. There is a handful in Washington, D.C. and in every police department where these SWAT teams or special squads are that belongs to the fascist organization such as L. Patrick Gray. Uh, I wrote about him also in 1972 covering up murders that were done by these teams in Los Angeles specifically of Ruben Salazar and other people, U.S. Attorney Robert Meyer and covering up the Isla Vista riots in Santa Barbara. This secret team in Italy really got its muscles and its dual allegiance the very year that John Kennedy was murdered in the United States. The San Jose Mercury had an article uh, just last Sunday. Uh, I finished with parts of the New York Times article. This one was titled, Italy's Justice Minister Quits in the Lodge Spy Scandal. This is also a United, uh, uh, this is a UPI story coming over the wire services as well as the local paper. The justice minister in Italy, Adolfo Sarti, resigned. He's the first cav casualty of the Christian Democratic Party with their murky Italian scandal. And this goes into another colonel, Antonio Vieser, V-I-E-Z-Z-E-R, arrested on spy charges, a former official of the military intelligence organization who has been arrested on spy star charges against Italy. They're really spying and working for Argentine. This article discusses the relationship of the Justice Minister Sardi and Mr. Jelly combined with their work with... Um, the Masonic Lodge, that it's a power within the state's power, and the involvement of them with Mr. Sendona. And this story, the story that came over this wire service, it said it, the scandal involves a labor minister, Franco Foschi, a foreign trade minister, Mr. Manka, prominent politicians who are not part of the cabinet directly, but famous politicians in Italy, the Secret Service chiefs, not just one that I mentioned, but the chiefs of the Secret Service. And again, this goes to who protects officials. I know that the Secret Service did not protect John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, or uh, Ronald Reagan, or the Pope, and they were allowed to be shot. The Secret Service chiefs are part of these teams. Army generals, they referred to the finance, police officials, and newspaper editors. This group, according to the story in the uh, San Jose Mercury, was accused as being a secret organization that has been barred from Italy's constitution for a long time. If you want to know more about the Masons, not the working Masons, but the one that is linked to the assassination teams or the control of a world government, there's a very good book by Neil Wilgus, W-I-L-G-U-S, called The Illuminoids, Secret Societies and Political Paranoia. There's an introduction by Robert Anton Wilson. And this book goes into the beginning of the Masonic fraternities. And as I say, it's not every Mason that is conspiratorially minded, but one group of the Masons, maybe in each country or each city, may be part of the secret team, and they use that as their cover. Uh, his book goes into the Warren Commission, the murder of John Kennedy, the Bilderberger Society, the infiltration into places like the Carousel Club, where Jack Ruby uh, ran his operation in Dallas, the Vacaville Prison. It goes into the CIA and the mob and the right-wing Cuban organizations, the Kent State killings, the Manson family, the SLA, the Watergate, the Unification Church of the Moonies, the FBI's involvement in the South Dakota Indians, the Phoenix Program uh, of uh, William Colby, which I said came back to the United States and formed the SLA and CIA, the Mind Control, control Programs, the oil millionaire H.L. Hunt. This book is a gold mine of information that links these secret societies that infiltrate into the Mason Group to all of the operations that I, as I say, I've been talking about for years on this program and are 
being exposed in Italy if you follow the newspapers the past week, go to the library and get them, and then look for the ones that are coming out in the weeks to come. In this book, uh, The Chronology of the Luminoids, he goes back to 1770 with the founding of the modern Freemasonry Society, 1721, how masonry was introduced into France, 1728, it was introduced into Spain, and 1731, how Benjamin Franklin in the United States went into masonry. As a matter of fact, uh, Charles Manson at his trial of the Manson family was giving hand signs as a mason to the judge on the bench, and they were communicating with specific hand signs that they had learned in their masonry. Uh, this goes into the chronology in 1735, the introduction of the Masons into Portugal, Russia, and Italy, and then it updates it to the Council of Foreign Relations in 1921 that was formed in England. Uh, Mussolini with uh, their li his links to the Italian and British intelligence coming together with the Mafia from Sicily. And then the connecting links of Hitler's National Socialist Party in 1923 in Germany and the Teapot Dome scandal with President Harding. This book has a chronology of J. Edgar Hoover taking over the FBI in 1924 and has an interconnecting link of particular lodges or suspicion of the Masons being involved in assassination teams and overthrowing of governments and controlling the world power. So as he follows this chronology through all of the various episodes, it's interesting to see it coming out in the terms of a Mason scandal and involving assassination teams down from Argentine and banking scandals of money that has go, have gone into fascist organizations of heroin uh, traffic and assassination squads combined with financiers from the Vatican. The thing that is so unusual about this case that's breaking this week is pinning it to a lodge in the Masons because if a person wants to understand them, you can read the book The Illuminides and get a vision of it. There's another book out some of you might know called The Cosmic Trigger, uh, and it's by Robert Anton Wilson, The Final Secret of the Illuminati. And in that book, he, he mentions me, uh, also Neil Wilgus mentions uh, our family and myself in his book, The Illuminoids, in his chronology. You'll see us in there and my research and so forth in that book. But in Robert Anton Wilson's Cosmic Trigger, he wrote, May Brussel, the world's greatest single conspiracy buff, has insisted over various underground stations, radio stations, that virtually all the terrorists left is secret CIA operation to discredit the rest of the left. And he says that, and he refers to some of the allegations of the Labor Party, too, and he said, Neither May Brussel nor the Labor Party are better at preparing evidential case than the late Joseph McCarthy, but the Watergate investigations reveal that the FBI's COINTEL program did involve agent provocateurs and attempts to divide the left by inciting crime and spreading paranoia. Maybe all the paranoids are right after all. Maybe. So after he begins to think that you're too much of a conspiracy buff by linking them, he has to apologize that, at, that in fact, the allegations I've been making on the radio stations are true. And uh, in the Illuminoids by Neil Wilgus, he has a continuous series of these conspiracies and assassinations and secret government operations, including the COINTEL program, the SLA, uh, the Manson family, and so forth. So that the Italian scandal that is out at this time is a continuation of the allegations that have been made by not only myself on the radio station, but the authors of the literal hundreds or thousands of books on this subject now trying to point out how this body works, the secret team, how it works through narcotics traffic, the books on the mob, or through mind control operations and experimentations, those books, or books on government operations on the FBI, the CIA, and specific government agencies, the National Security Council, and uh, the Defense Department, the Torbett document. There are many, many books on this team, and the, these hidden teams, the government within a government, 
and the one in Italy is peeking through right now. There's an article in the Washington Post. Uh, the Italian officials are resigning in a row about the Masons. And it goes on to describe Justice Adolfo Sardi resigned today after his name was linked to a Masonic lodge that the Italian prosecutors are investigating as an alleged criminal association. There is a widening scandal about this lodge that has led to the arrest of a former Secret Service colonel. There's charges of illegal activity, bribery, tax evasion in the oil industry, and a far-reaching plot to set up an authoritarian regime in Italy. That's what they tried, as I say, in Spain in February. They succeeded in Ecuador this month. They succeeded in Bangladesh. They tried removing Regan by the bullet. If they didn't do that, they still have control of a very scared man who got the message. And the same with the Pope. Uh, this group is trying to set up authoritarian operations in every country, but they got caught in Italy, and some of them uh, are put in jail. Uh, this coup almost took place in Italy like it almost took place in Spain. But I'm not sure that the masses of the population or everybody involved in the police or Secret Service want to go along with it or the banking officials. And that's why these regimes seem to be falling apart. And uh, in particularly in Italy, the scandal is breaking now, and it might have to do with the assassination attempt on the Pope. As I say, high officials in the government are described in the Washington Post article and their links to the Secret uh, Service in Italy specifically, and how uh, one of the men involved who's been arrested, this Adolfo Sardi, his name has been linked to the Masonic Lodge, is the one who helped make battles against terrorists in Italy. Now, the very group that are involved in overthrowing the Italian government have been in charge of finding terrorists in Italy. And you'll find later that this will go back to the Aldo Moro kidnapping and murder that was not done by a leftist Red Brigade, but was done by a right-wing group. And I have articles linking it to Michael Sandon and his banking financiers, again, the ones who kidnapped him, to, took him to Italy to clean up some matters before he came back to the United States jails. Now, these people are in charge of terrorism. This is the same mentality that we have with Ronald Reagan giving speeches about terrorism and Alexander Haig talking about terrorism or William French Smith. I warned months before Reagan ever came into office that the shtick of Reagan and Haig is to whip up the lather about the terrorists, the terrorists, when they know that the Army and the FBI and the COINTEL programs have set up the terrorists so they have an excuse to get more control of us. They don't want it to look like a hidden government behind a government, so they have to make actions take place on the street that are the excuse for their having control. Richard Nixon from 1968 until he's out of office in 73, when at the height of Watergate in 74, had Operation Chaos. Why would the FBI want to have chaos among students, youth people, um, organizations that have a right to assemble under our Constitution? Why do they need to create case chaos? They called it Operation Chaos with our tax dollars. The reason they have to have chaos is so that they can have control. It gives them the legitimate excuse for control where uh, they don't want to say, well, we're a hidden government and we're in now, so we're going to kick out the legitimate government. That wouldn't look very well, so they have to create the situation. Well, I'll go more next week into the links of uh, Muhammad Ajah, who shot the Pope, and the reasons for shooting the Pope at this time, and the links to this scandal. But save the articles on uh, this scandal for the Washington Post, the New York Times, and follow it closely because make the parallels with what they're saying there about the Army generals, the heads of the anti-terrorist squad, the elite police squad, the newspaper people, the judges. The parallels are similar in all the countries that have been overthrown, and they're similar to a group in the White House at the present time under Richard Allen and William Casey and Ronald Reagan. And hopefully, maybe we can avert that kind of crisis in this country if we follow some of this missing fascist money. That's the way to stop it, is to follow the missing millions. And that's why I've been talking about those missing millions for week after week until this Italian scandal broke. 
Our time is up now. I'll get back with the scandal next week and more. This is Mae Brussel in Carmel, California. This has been World Watchers International with noted conspiracy investigator Mae Brussel. This program originates from Carmel, California. <laughs>